Hello everyone, my name is David Wilt, and I'm going to be doing a quick report for AST 1002-62195 Descriptive Astronomy. Specifically today we're going to be talking about what would happen to celestial objects in our solar system if the sun vanished, or specifically what would happen to the earth if the sun vanished, and what would happen to the moon if the sun vanished. And when we talk about the sun vanishing, what we're talking about is it just no longer existing. When I first read this question, my mind immediately went to the Olympics. Uh, and I thought about discus throwers. Think about uh, discus throwing. Uh, discus is essentially a frisbee that a discus thrower uh, will hold in their hand and they will spin around in a circle. And at that point, if you think about it, the discus thrower could be considered our sun. And the discus itself could be considered the earth. And the discus itself goes in an orbit around the discus thrower until the discus thrower decides that they no longer want to exert any type of force on the discus and they let it go, and it flies off in a perfect tangent directly away from them. Or directly and tangent from the point at which it was released. And I believe that's exactly what would happen if the sun ceased to exist within our solar system. So I set out on a mission. A few years ago, a game called Universe Sandbox came out on Steam that allowed you to set up dozens of different scenarios, whatever your wild imagination could come up with to test out all sorts of things that could happen in the universe, depending on whatever sinister plan you may have been coming up with. Uh, it certainly would save a lot of money for me having to build my own spaceship, travel to the sun, put it in a tiny box, and just kind of sit back and watch the havoc that may have ensued. Um, so I opened up Steam this morning, and I happened to notice that Universe Sandbox 2 came out yesterday. Perfect. So here we are in the actual simulation itself. But again, this is Universe Simulator 2. It just came out yesterday, August 24th. Uh, and it's actually pretty cool. Uh, you can simulate pretty much anything you would want on a galactic uh, universal scale even. Um, obviously it's called Universe Simulator 2, so that makes sense. Um, but what we're trying to tackle today is um, two questions. If the sun were to vanish from our galaxy, just immediately disappear, or its gravitational pull no longer had any effect on any other celestial body uh, within the galaxy itself, what would happen to the Earth? And keeping that same idea in mind, what would then happen to the Moon as it uh, orbited around Earth and the Sun's gravity no longer had any impact on it? Uh, so what we actually have in Universe Simulator 2 here is the Milky Way uh, galaxy. Um, you can actually see, if we zoom way far in, we can see our sun and all of our terrestrial planets up to Mars. You can see some uh, objects within the asteroid belt itself. Uh, pulling outward, we can see the Jovian planets. And keeping uh, moving outward, we can see uh, some Kuiper objects, some uh, asteroids and meteors and other things within the actual uh, gal galaxy itself. Um, but what we're doing today is focusing on a little blue dot called Earth. So if we double click on it, we're going to zoom in. If you look at Earth, you can actually see, orbiting around it, the moon. And let's actually take a look at that actual orbit itself. So we're going to go to view. I go to orbits. And you can see that the moon keeps a nice circular orbit around Earth at the moment. And if we zoom out, we can see that um, all of these celestial objects currently have a nice orbit around the sun. So what we're going to do, uh, the simulation is currently paused. So we're going to just let it play for a little bit. And we're going to go back to doing trails. We're just going to let these go for just a little while. We're going to speed this up just a little bit. About 14 days per second. And as you can see, the planets and everything orbit as you would expect them to. So what's going to happen if we take our sun and we just delete it? What we should expect to see is that each of these planets will go off at a direct tangent off of whatever orbit it's currently going on. Um, just as you'd expect from a discus thrower, perhaps, um, they should go off um, directly tangential to whatever direction they're currently heading in. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's delete the sun. Uh, it sounds a lot more sinister when you say it out loud. So what we actually are saying is exactly what we expected. Uh, each of the planets is now rocketing off at whatever their current velocity was um, off of their orbit. And you can check to see their velocity is actually remaining the same. Um, in this particular simulation, we didn't blow up the sun. 
uh, we didn't have any great force that impacted anything. All we did is we just completely eliminated the gravitational forces that the sun had on the planets within our galaxy. So if we go ahead and we zoom in on Earth, what happened to our moon? We can see the moon itself, oh, zoomed a little too far there, is still orbiting the Earth. Let's go ahead and turn orbits back on. And it still kept that same orbit around the Earth that it had before. And why is that? Again, there were no external forces here. Uh, we didn't blow up the sun. So nothing actually impacted the moon's ability to orbit the Earth. Nothing, uh, no external forces uh, increased the velocity at which the moon moves to encourage it to break its orbit. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see what it would take if we increased... Oh, I'm targeting Earth right now, so let me actually slow this down a little bit because the moon's zipping along. Here we go. Uh, if we increased the orbital velocity of the moon, and to do that, we're actually just going to go into some of the settings for the moon itself, and we're actually going to just decrease the orbital period. So if you think about that, if we're decreasing the orbi orbital period, we should be increasing its orbital velocity because it takes less time for the moon to actually circle around the Earth, which means it's going faster. So if we decrease it once, you'll see that the moon itself is now actually in a much larger orbit around the Earth. And if we decrease it again, we will continue to see that uh, the moon is now in much larger orbits around the actual Earth itself. Gravitational forces are... There we go. We eventually got to a point where the moon was moving fast enough within its orbit that it slung... Sling, slingshot? Slungshot? What's the post tense for sling? Slingshotted <laughs> around the Earth and broke free of its orbit and is now just careening through the galaxy um, just as Earth is. So that kind of answers our question. Um or the question I had, at least in our discussion. The reason that moon, the moon, continues to orbit around Earth is because it hasn't moved, it's not moving fast enough to break free of the actual orbit around the Earth itself. Um, hopefully, that will clarify some things. I'm still curious about the, the mathematics behind it. I'm still very curious about, you know, we've now just completely eliminated the sun, and the sun still had some type of gravitational pull on the Earth and the moon. And that didn't seem to, at least in this simulation, um, have any impact on the moon's actual orbit. So I may actually slow down the simulation a little bit more and say, okay, did the moon's orbit actually change based off of the elimination of the sun? Um, and, and answer some of those other questions as well. So does the moon move slightly closer to the sun whenever uh, it's closest to um, the sun? And does it move slightly closer to the Earth whenever the Earth is the closest thing to the sun? A lot of these types of things, I'm going to dig in a little bit more and see what I can find out. Uh, obviously, this is a, a simulation. It's an application, so it's not going to be 100% accurate. But uh, if anything, it's going to be a fun way to um, test what's actually happening. Oh, that's actually that's actually really cool. I just noticed that. Um, you can see the Earth itself <laughs> in this particular simula uh, simulation is now completely frozen uh, because we don't have a sun anymore. So um, somewhere on here are the frozen corpses of all of civilization. Everything we once knew and did and all that other nice, horribly depressing stuff now. But that's really cool that the simulation itself did that. Anyways, if you get the opportunity and you just want to play and have fun, definitely check out Universe Simulator 2. It's, it's a lot of fun so far. We'll see what else we can do with it. And as class moves on, I'll probably do a couple more experiments in here just to see, just to see what all we can find. So thanks for watching and have a great day.